I was so wrong about Tears of the Kingdom. So we've all been waiting absolutely years for Zelda Tears of the Kingdom. And some of you may have seen some of my content running up to this as being a little bit mixed, a bit on the fence. But of course it redeemed itself when we got shown the final trailer and then that blew my mind. But I was still a bit on the fence of like, okay, is it any good? Well, now I've played it. <laughs> All my concerns are now gone. If you're like me and you were on the fence previously, <clears throat> you probably want to just dive in and just start playing it. I've only played the first like two hours of the game, so there's no spoilers here whatsoever. It's right at the tutorial bit. I'm towards the end of it. So at the tutorial, essentially you've got like three mini shrines that you've got to complete before you get out of that tutorial. It's taken me around two hours, maybe over two hours, and I've not even finished the third one. I'm coming up to it. So all of my sort of like opinions are based on this opening tutorial scene. Straight away though, I was absolutely grasped by the music. It's so, so good. The, like the intro to this game is really good. Like seriously good. They really set the tone of, I guess, what's to come. Within the first sort of like several minutes, it's quite dark, it's a bit dingy. I feel like this is a bit of a heavier, sort of darker storyline and I am all for that. I am all for that and it gripped me immediately. Again, like I said, I was on the fence here. I was like, well, I'll, I'll, I'll wait until I experience it myself, but I was just like waiting to be disappointed. Even though I shouldn't be, because I have every faith in Nintendo and of course Zelda, but for some reason I just felt like I wasn't gonna have that much hype that I had for the first one, because I just didn't. But now that has just completely flipped. <laughs> that intro scene really, really is compelling, gripped me in. I was just like, oh wow, what is going on here? Like this is freaking amazing. They're underneath what seems to be Hyrule Castle, like in a cave. Again, it's not really a spoiler, it's the intro to the game, right? It's the first few minutes you find this out. And then you find like some paintings on the wall and Zelda's all like, oh my God, this must be this big battle thing that happened. And then you find somebody down in the cave that you probably shouldn't have been finding. <laughs> and well, he wakes up and he just freaking annihilates you in like one hit and basically says, I know who you are, you suck, bye. And that's basically it, game over. We lose Zelda, Link's all messed up with his dodgy arm and stuff and, you, you don't know what's gonna happen. And then you kind of wake up and there's this old zombie arm that's been attached to you. And this Zonai guy is just like, yeah, okay, let's, let's do some stuff. And you're like, okay, cool. <laughs> so you're like unleashed into this sky area, which is really, really, really nice, by the way. Like it feels brilliant. I loved Skyward Sword. The like feel of being up in the sky, I really liked that. But obviously I loved Breath of the Wild too, but this is just something else. The landscapes and stuff, even though you're in the sky and it's basically just clouds and like islands in the sky, from what I've seen so far, like it's breathtaking. Like it really makes you feel like you're up high, even though you're still on an island, you could just think, oh, well, I'm just on the ground, right? Looking at the sky and stuff. No, you still get that sort of sense of wonder. And if anything, I immediately am having more fun than I had with Breath of the Wild. And with that gameplay reveal trailer they did with the like, you know, the fuse and all that kind of stuff, I was like, yeah, that seems really cool. But yeah, I don't know until I try it. I, ca I can't stop using it. Like it is so intuitive. Like you sort of get these abilities as you do these shrines, right? And it's just amazing. Like anything you want to do, you can do. And I was worried that the controls would be a little bit cumbersome but once you get it it is so easy you just press and hold l and then you can select which ability you want and then you just use it if you've got a twig or a sword or whatever you can just hold l and then or tap it depending on what ability you've got and then literally just combine anything to it and then you can get rid of it the same way it's really really easy to use and i love how easy it is to fuse arrows because you get your arrow out first with i think it's zr and then you press up on the d-pad and then you can just fuse any of your items to your arrows and just bam there you go so you can literally do one and then immediately after you know press up on the d-pad and then select something else just to try it and see what it does it is so so easy to control and I am loving how sort of easy it is. I really am. I think I could step away from this game 
come back and get the controls relatively quickly. And that's something that I really like because I have a terrible habit of playing like several hours of a game, putting it down, forgetting about it, playing something else, coming back and then going, I don't know what I'm doing. And you know, this, this feels like I'll be able to jump back in a lot easier. Now, of course, you've got to use your abilities. It kind of sets you up in this tutorial bit to go in a certain way. You can go wherever you want, but it kind of sets you up with the abilities you're going to need to traverse certain areas or to defeat certain bosses. And there are little shrines. So these little shrines you go in and it's basically just a tutorial of the ability, but you still have to complete it like a little mini dungeon. And it's just really, really good. And like I said, I think I'm having a lot more fun with the intro to this game than I have with Breath of the Wild. Breath of the Wild, you kind of wake up in the cave, you exit the cave, and that's it. You basically just do what you want. I know you're on that sort of plateau area, but you're, you're just free roaming. This feels a little bit more sort of like guided, but it also feels like the storyline's sort of like more intact at the beginning. One thing that I kept saying about in previous videos was uh, I really like linear experiences. Now don't shoot me, I do love open world games, but I do like linear games too. And I was worried that like we would lose that feel from the Zelda games if they just continue to be open world, because I feel open world of often detracts from the story and like how in immersed you get into that storyline when there's no guidance, because obviously open world, you're just go where you want, right? There is no guidance. They're not forcing you down a path. However, the start of this, Tears of the Kingdom, even though it is open world and you can choose which shrines you've got to do, it still feels more guided. I'm feeling that kind of almost linear experience that I wanted, even though it's not a linear experience. I have no idea if you even understand what I'm talking about, <laughs> but I know what I'm talking about. So there we go. Like I said previously in my sort of like thoughts running up to this, I was concerned about performance. And I do wanna say that there's a couple of minor performance issues I've seen so far. So when you're using the fusibility and stuff, you definitely notice the game starts chugging. So if you've built a raft and you've got all this stuff coming off of it, and then you pick it up and you wanna walk over there with it, the game starts stuttering a little bit. And again, right at the very beginning, my biggest thing is the shadows flickering. Like it is so obvious and it really, really detracts you initially. After the first sort of five, 10 minutes of playing, you get so overwhelmed and engrossed in how good it is. I've only played it handheld on the OLED. It's just so good. Like it really is. You forget about any performance issues in terms of like graphical twitches and stuff, you know, like those shadows that are sort of shimmering and stuff. I forgot about that after the first 10 minutes. I really, really did. The only time I noticed it was when I was picking up rafts and other like crafts and stuff I'd done and tried to carry them. Then it was a little bit chuggy, but I am just loving this. I am really, really enjoying it. And I'm so glad that that is the case. I really am. So I think if you are on the fence about getting Tears of the Kingdom, I, I would just say just do it. Like honestly, just do it. I pre-ordered it even though I was on the fence and I just thought I'll give it a chance. And yeah, now I'm already blown away and it might already be my favorite intro to a Zelda game. I don't know. Like I'm, I'm really, really enjoying it and I can't wait to play it some more. So let me know what your thoughts are. Have you started playing this yet? Let me know down in the comments. Are you on the fence? Have you got it pre-ordered and it's just not turned up yet? What are your thoughts? I would love to know. And whilst you're here, go down there, subscribe, smash that like button and go and check out me and AJ over on our podcast channel. Go and subscribe over there as well where we do long form discussions about all things gaming. And then check out another video by me down here. And I'll see you in the next one. Thanks for watching.